تفضل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I'm just going back الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ثم ما بعد uh, السلام عليكم brothers and sisters uh, I just want to thank you first first I want to thank you again for allowing me this opportunity to share with you some of what I learned about the Surah sur Fatiha, the greatest Surah in the Quran. Even, even if you do 100 hours on the Fatiha of Allah, Azim, you will not do it justice because the more you talk, the more you dig, the, the deeper it gets. And the more you think you know, the more you find yourself in deeper waters. There's so many things you can talk about. Even 100 hours, Wallahi Azim, you will not do it service because some scholars talk about it for like months and months and months. If you don't believe me, go look in, in, in the, some of the, look at the, some of the studies. Nama Ali Khan, even Al Kawthar, which is only three ayahs in short surah, he speaks on it for like six or eight hours. I forget. You can look it up yourself. So, I, before before I, I start, I just want to tell you uh, that, that I want to say no amount of time is really due for the Fatiha. Nothing will do with any justice. Even 100 hours is really not enough, like I said, because you can always find yourself digging deeper and deeper and finding more and more. And as you, as you understand it, you will find that you really, there's so much that you don't know. As you think you know, you find out that you really don't know. So in this, in this talk, I'm only leaning on one guy in particular, Naman Ali Khan. I had other, other resources I could have tapped into, but I haven't had time. As I said earlier, my mom has been in and out of the hospital. I've been really the only caretaker. All my brothers and sisters are not in the country, so I'm the only one here. And I was pulled in so many directions this week in particular, but anyway, I'm not making a complaint. It still will be wonderful. Whatever I'm going to share with you is going to come to you as a bomb. And, and mo in most cases, you're going to be shot at how beautiful it is. And maybe some things you know, maybe some, some things you don't know. But I bet there's a lot that you did not know, which I'm going to hopefully share with you. I am, if you don't know me by now, <laughs> I'm, I'm never fully prepared, honestly. It's just my style. Because you know what? I think people who are fully prepared, everything, every word they say, everything they say, they even put down the jokes, they even put down the punchlines. That's too mechanical for me. I, I get bored with that. I have to, my brain, alhamdulillah, I'm not boasting, wallah al I'm not boasting, but alhamdulillah, God gave me the gift of flexibility in my brain. I can think of seemingly, not really, because you never can think about two things at one time. Impossible. People who say they multitask, they really don't multitask. They just do something here, then they jump there and they do something. Because your brain can take only one impulse at one time, period. So people who say, I can think two things at one time, then they can. They can just jump around between two things. I have, but that requires flexibility. That's also a blessing because some people are just one track, one track minded people. I'm, I, I'm really, my mind is kind of wandering all over the place. Maybe ADD is serving me. I have no idea, but it's a gift from Allah. Alhamdulillah. I, I have that ability. A lot of people don't have it. And I'm not saying I'm better, I'm worse. I'm just saying how things are. So you're going to find me actually not prepared. I don't like to prepare because I like to leave some room for spontaneous, sponta being spontaneous, spontaneity, I think it's called flexibility, creativity. Uh, you know, as I'm talking, so you'll see me. You'll see me. You'll see me when I digress. You'll know that new thought came to my mind. I'm like, oh, this is pro proper time to say it. So I say it. So you'll find me digressing and then coming back. Hopefully, I don't go too far where <laughs> where I can come back. But I like to leave some room for surprise, some room for creativity. So because I'm as Madiha, if that's not true, Madiha, if not true, you say it, please. Teachers learn the most from whom? From their students. Is not true, Madiha? If it's true, please raise your hand. Or give me some up. Teachers really learn from their students. I'm learning as I leave some room for uncertainty, creativity. I learn as I'm sharing with you. So what new thought comes like, Oh, I never thought about it this way. That's why I like to not prepare fully because I think it's boring, honestly. I get bored with full preparation, but I'm not justifying. I should be more ready. But like I said, this week is really hard, but it's my nature to be unprepared and, 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 and spontaneous then be prepared and boring. and Because usually when, when I get bored, I'm usually boring. Any person who says I am bored, that means they are boring. So I don't like to be boring. I don't like to push <laughs> sleep. Hopefully I will not do that. With that being said, I'm going to start. I only leaned on one particular scholar, Naman Ali Khan. And I promise you, if I were to give this again in three months from now, I'm going to lean heavily on other other people. Like, like for example, Muhammad Shanqiti, Fadil Samurai, uh, Ratib Nabasi, a little bit, not too much. Uthman Khamis, those are the, Uthman Khamis, those are the people that I go to. But my first go-to guys, and should be your first go-to, is Naman Ali Khan. When it comes to understanding Quran, Wallahi Azim, he's enough. If you just follow Naman Ali Khan, MashaAllah, he has more. He is, I think, I think, I personally think, he's probably number one in the world in Tafsir. I have no doubt that he is to me, but maybe to you he's not. But um, if I were to give the Fatiha, that's why it's important to refresh 
and to hear it from as many people as possible because it speaks differently to everyone we said that last week. But if I were to do it again three months down the line, I promise you, I will give you things that I will not use any of this thing, and I'll use new things that are just as fascinating because I'll be leaning on a different pro uh, scholar who sees things differently. The Quran speaks differently to everyone. So you can never get enough of hearing about the Fatiha. You can never get enough of learning any, any surah, actually, not just the Fatiha, particularly the Fatiha, because it's the mother of the book. Subhanallah. So I'm going to leave it at that. With that being said, I'm not completely unprepared, and I think you're in for a nice ride, whether, you know, a lot of it will be spontaneous, a lot of it will be prepared, but we're going to see what we can do. I'm sure you're going to like it. And those people who do not really have the stomach to stick out one hour, I never, by the way, the other thing about me, admission, I never really go, if you tell me one hour, I always have more than one hour. If you tell me an hour and a half, I have more than an hour and a half. I always go over the top board. If you're bored, if you're not the type that really want to stick through, that's okay. If I'm overwhelming you, you can log out. It's okay, no problem. But I cannot give less than I know I can give for this particular. I mean, I respect the time as best as possible, but I still uh, can, you know, I can go more than, I can talk. I'm verbose, you know, I can go. A lot more. I have a lot of information that just jumping in my head. I can just deliver as much as I can with the time, hopefully with the time that's given. But I often, if you don't know me by now, I often go over time. I hope I'm being beneficial. I'm, I hope I'm not boring you. I hope I'm not overwhelming you. But that's how I am. The other thing I want to say, I want to say you, you guys who are here, I don't, have, I don't see the names. I don't see how many people there are. But I just want to say something about you guys. A lot of people talk a good talk. A lot of people. But very few walk. You guys are the ones that show up. So you got to give yourself some credit. A lot of people give you, you know, a song and a dance. Hey, I do, I do, I do, I do. But they are playing hookah. It's Friday night. They're out smoking hookah, not playing hookah. Smoke, playing table, playing cards, out watching soap opera, out wasting time with friends. Wallahi, there's no time. Wallahi, I feel bad for those people. And I want to acknowledge you and appreciate you for being the few that do versus the many that talk. So thank you so much for attending. I want to honor you for that. And I want to give you as much information as I can. If you get tired, just log out. It's okay. But uh, hopefully you will, you will be you will be pulled into the information that you're going to stay with me through the whole hour, hour and a half, whatever time we, we can finish. With that said, let me start, actually. So uh, we said last week, a couple of things we said last week, some of the points, I want to touch on some of the points just to get you up to speed. The Fatiha is the greatest surah of the entire Quran, and it was one of the very first surahs that was ever revealed. It is the first surah that came one piece. All the other Quran came piecemeal, then went somewhere else then came back so all of the they came, those sewer by the way are among the first five Fatiha is definitely among the first five surahs that were ever revealed however the Fatiha is unique because it came down one piece one shot to just say okay this is what you're up against this is what the whole Quran this is what I want from you this is who I am this is what I want from you that's what Allah says in the Fatiha so it came one piece to just define who Allah is and define who we are and define the relationship between us Okay, the other thing that we said last week, among many other names, the most important name that we talked about, the most interesting name is, well, you know, it said the mother of the book, the mother of the Quran, the opener, and then we said the Sab al Mathani. We said the reason we said Sab al Mathani, the, the seven verses that never cease to be repeated over and over and over again from 1400 years ago till eternity. They're going to be, the, the, its recitation never ceases. Every second, every second, every day, every year. There are millions, hundreds of millions of people praying somewhere. And now there are millions of people praying in China and Turkey and wherever. You know, Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, one of them. Every second, Fatiha is being repeated millions of times. We said that last, last week. Yeah. One other point we made last week is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named it the Sab al Mathani. We said that because it never stops ceasing to repeat. We also said that the Fatiha is split into two distinct parts, two parts. The first three ayahs are for ilm knowledge, who Allah is, introducing himself. The second half is for Amal, and we're going to tap into the second half more heavily today. So, that's that's that. So, we understand who Allah is. Now, the second half is like, okay, now that we know who Allah is, what are we supposed to do? We ask Allah, please show us. We're ready to worship. Tell us. So, that's the other half that we're going to be talking about today. Okay. We also mentioned that sound knowledge, good knowledge, if you have good knowledge, usually you have good actions, but not necessarily. You could stray also. You can make mistakes because we're all humans. Insan and Nusyan are, share the same roots. We forget. We're lazy. We, the nafs is khabitha, is kaslana, we said. So we forget. We're lazy sometimes. We don't, just because we have good knowledge, we don't necessarily always, always do good, good, good by the knowledge. 
sometimes we do. But if you definitely, if you have bad knowledge, you definitely will have bad actions. So bad ilm leads to bad amal. Definitely, always, always. However, good ilm does not always lead to good amal, and that's clear, I hope. So, and also the motto of the Jews is Sami'na wa asayna. We said that in Baqarah. The summary of the Baqarah is the Jews say, you know what? We hear and we disobey. The Muslims, the true Muslim says, we hear and we obey. That's the difference between Jews. That's why Allah is mad at the Jews because they got all the knowledge, all the prophets were Jewish, except Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Arab and the I think Ali Hakrif maybe, Saleh maybe was, and some other ones. They were not, they were not, uh, yeah, Shaib, I think he was not Jewish. So those people, few are not Jewish, but most of the lineage of the prophets were Jews. So Allah gave them more than he gave everybody else and still, and saved them from Pharaoh. As soon as they, they spoke, Muhammad, uh, Musa alayhi salam, split the sea right in front of their own eyes. That's a miracle that they saw. So the impact, when you see such a miracle, the impact is massive, massive. We don't know, we hear it, but we, we didn't see it with our eyes. So it's, to us, it's less, less significant. But to them, right before their eyes, he split the ocean. He drowned Pharaoh that has been killing them for 400 years. And still, immediately still they disobeyed Allah. All, after all the karamas, after all the blessings, after all the privileges and the favoritism that Allah gave the Jews, they immediately disobeyed. They said, Samirna, we know, but we disobey, we choose. So that's why Allah is mad at them. Muslims say, we hear and we obey. We don't question unconditionally. Just tell us how we do. We don't even question. That's, that's the difference between the Jews and the Muslims, inshallah. <clears throat> So that's these are some of the points that we we do uh, talk about. We did talk about last week, and, and, and we're gonna leave it at that. If you have any more questions, go back and watch it. You can catch up to speed. <clears throat> okay. Some scholars say that these two, these last two verses, which is the Muslim, hopefully, in this all the sages and the, the prophets and all the Sahaba, all these are. Allah bestowed blessings on them. Allah blessed them. He gave them favoritism. Give, guide us the way you guided those, we're asking Allah. Not the way with the people that you're angry with. Some scholars say that means all the Jews, but it doesn't necessarily is restrictive to the Jews. Also Muslims. Some Muslims don't pray. Some Muslims curse. And they, uh, they mock religion. They make fun of Allah. They make fun of the prophets. They don't believe Muhammad is a prophet. Some idiots. Those people also fall among that category that we hear and we disobey. So that includes, it's, most, it's, not, it's mostly meant by the Jew, for the Jews, not exclusive though. It could be Muslims, it could be anybody who does not obey the commandment. Okay, the one that went astray. Also, it means really mainly the Christians, but not exclusively the Christians, because a lot of people, Muslims, I know a lot of Muslims, Maliha knows one particular person that I, we talked about. He has been worshiping for 40 years. What, 40 years he's been praying. I used to end him like Niyalo. I wish I was like him, he was such... Now, after four years of complete worship, now he doesn't even he doesn't even pray. So you can go astray because your friends can really sway you one way. Sahib, sahib, they say in Arabic. So the friends can affect you negatively or positively, even at all age. This guy is almost 65 years old and he doesn't pray anymore. All of a sudden, I'm like, are you serious? He believed in something called Nasi, Masi, whatever it's called, that, that where, you know, Ramadan is a different time. There's one guy we all know in the community who is spreading that, that, that vile uh, the ideas. And he, he actually caused four of my closest friends to stray. Four of them. One of them, I don't want to mention names. He, he, he went to Hajj. He eats pork. He told me he eats pork. He was praying. Now he eats pork. So now you tell me if that's not Dalala. You tell me if that's not just going crazy at, at the end of the age. So this person is committing so much uh, you know, uh, atrocities, so many bad things. He's influencing people negatively so bad. I feel sorry for him. May Allah be. But uh, But... But so if people can go wrong even at old age. Do not think just because you're, you're, you know, you're praying whatever that you may not stray. You always have to be refreshing. You always have to deepen your faith. You always have to strengthen. And inshallah, we can all die on Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah. That's the only thing. Hess al khatima. The deen is by its khawatim, by its end results. You know, if you're doing praying and then at the end you go crazy, what good is that? Allah will punish you for everything. Not wipes out all the good things you've done. And vice versa, if you're bad and you really, truly come, repent, come to Allah, He will also wipe out your, your previous uh, sins. So, so please watch your friends. Please watch the company that you keep. Tell your kids, if you have kids, tell them to watch the company that you keep because it's very influential. SubhanAllah. So the, Christian, you know, the Christians know very well that Jesus, they made up this line about the Trinity, Triune God. 
they claim they're monotheists. How could they be monotheists when they say God is three parts, three and one, one and three, whatever, the egg, the yolk, the apple, we heard it all. It does not make sense. I have friends who are intelligent Christians. I don't want to keep talking about this, but I just want to make that point. Intelligent college graduates, successful in finance and business. They have homes. They have every, they have, they have, they are really, really smart. And Nate, when you talk to them about religion, they're like, yeah, Jesus. I'm like, explain to me the Trinity. Well, how do you, they look like they're dumb. They have, they don't understand it themselves. How could you do well when you don't have good foundation? I don't understand it. And it really saddens me really, because they are so, they're so good. They do good things, but they do it based on the wrong, they, they do it for the wrong God. They don't believe in the God. We, we, the Islam is pure, simple monotheism. That's it. No other gods, no other creator. One God, one method, and that's it. Simple. We don't have to create lies. They made the lies, and they decide to believe them. Just like the ostrich. When the ostrich is being chased by hyenas, that's it. She, the ostrich buries her head, its head, in the sand, making a clear choice to just not know, you know, being, being oblivious, not knowing, like, you know, it's fine, they think. Till the hyenas come and eat it. That is, that is, that is insane. When you know there's, I gifted them Bibles. I talked to them many times. They, they asked them to explain to me. They were just looking, looking like idiots. They had no idea. They didn't know. They not, no, none, none of them ever read the Bible. None of them. But they say you have to have faith, and they kind of lull themselves into that delusion, and they believe it. They make up lies, and they choose to believe it, and they go by it. They stick by it without even entertaining other options. That is insane to me. But that's that's how they are. The Allah, Allah, Allah. So we are so blessed to be Muslim. Alhamdulillah, Islam. Please, every day you have to say Alhamdulillah, I'm Islam. Because when you talk about the Christians and the Jews, they're completely talking off field. Of, of the, <laughs> it's crazy. They have no common sense in their religion. It's just built on nothing, built on, on lies. And they build, chose to believe it. That what drives me crazy. But who knows? People, religion is very deeply rooted. If their parents made them Christians, then they don't want to upset their parents, I guess. I don't know. Alhamdulillah, we, we're, we're Muslims. And I honor those reverts that, that were not Muslims and they became Muslims. They must face a lot more challenges than we do. Alhamdulillah. That is amazing. I really, my hat is off to all the reverts among you if there are any reverts. Anyway, so that's being said, we're going to... Islam is the truth and the truth is always, always, always simple. The truth always, always, always makes sense. So Islam is the way of all the prophets. There was no Christianity before Jesus. There was right. It was all Muslims. Jesus fell on his face. It says the Quran, like Moses fell on his face, like Abraham fell on his face. Everybody who prays, who falls on his face, the Muslims. We they pray like us. They believed in one in one God, not in triune God, not in multi God. Not in, so so Alhamdulillah, Islam has been there all all along. However, it was given different names over time, and they're all wrong. It's Islam, only one religion, full submission, full surrender, unconditional obedience to the one and only. That's it. Simple. There's no no no. Lies, no mythologies, no delusions, no triune gods, no trinity, you know. Original sin, I don't understand the original sin. That is that is concept. If somebody thinks about it logically, it makes no sense. Just because Adam, or just because Hawa, Eve, gave Adam the apple, they say all women are cursed. They hate women. I'm like, you have granddaughters, you have a wife. How could you hate her? It's like, oh, it's, the period is punishment. Because we, I'm like, how could she be guilty, your, your daughter, for, for Eve, who died thousands and thousands of years ago? <laughs> we all are responsible for our own actions. I'm not responsible if you make a mistake. You're gonna, I'm not going to get punished. You're going to get punished. It just does not make sense. They think we are cursed. We are, and they like to use the word falling world. Falling world. I'm like, what do you mean falling world? Failing or falling or something. I'm like, every minute is a good opportunity. Every minute is an opportunity to just make a different choice. It's the choices. Life, time is a series of choices. One choice after another. You are free to choose Islam, invites you in, and it sounds like, Iqra, read, expand, look again and again and again, and, you know, get, learn, it says Islam, not the, the, their faith is, you have to have belief, don't, even the priests haven't read the Bible, how's that? There's zero people in the world that know the Bible, which Bible? There's many Bibles, they cannot possibly know them. There are 200 million Muslims expected that know the Quran verbatim, word to word. Chinese kids, five-year-old Chinese kid knows the Quran. He doesn't even reach to them in Arabic, Marhaba, he doesn't know what you're saying. But he learned since he was born, since he was three, I think they parents put him. He learned the Quran Chinese, five-year-old, the alam. Wallahi, that's amazing. So there are 200 million Muslims that can catch you if you make a mistake. If you burn all the Qurans, we can produce it in one day. And there's 200 million people editing the text. 
Try to do that Christianity. Burn your books and see what happens. You will not. They will not. They will not come to to this to an agreement which Bible to reproduce. It is not really. It failed in Europe. It failed in everywhere. Christianity is failing. Islam is rising. I swear. I hope the golden age of Islam is coming in our time, lifetime. Mashallah. People who have never heard about Islam are coming to Islam because they're tired of these lies. They just doesn't add up. It does not add up. So Alhamdulillah, rahm rahmatullah wasia, and Allah touches people who have never been to expose to any Muslims or Islam or anything, you just come to Islam. Reverts, you can look at, and I love to read reverts because the Asfari, people who have never heard about Islam just become Muslims on their own. SubhanAllah, Allah calls them in. The Islam, Islam invites you. We should be inviting to Islam. We should not deter people. And the more knowledge you have, the more skills you have to invite people, the more know-how you will have. So please always expand, always refresh, always hear, hear from others, hear from different people. Here, read the Fatiha on your own. Follow the first scholars. Let Madiha give you one talk on Fatiha. See how she speak. The Quran speaks to her. Let, always, 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 you have to be like Sabah Mathani. You always should be refreshing, learning, expanding, growing. Because only in growth you can help. If you're not growing, you're dying. If you're stagnant, you're gonna have mosquitoes. You have slime. You're gonna have stagnation. Is is deadly. You don't. You cannot. Muslims cannot afford to be stagnant. Muslims, uh, we are ummat qara. We are ummat expand. We are ummat learn. So we should always, always refresh. Please, always attend any halaqa you can. Because you know what? You're going to hear something. I bet you one thing, at least one thing that you never heard before from anybody, any scholar. Everybody brings something to the table. Subhanallah. So that's that. Uh, okay, I'm going to go to the lecture now. Finally, I promise that we go. Okay, we're going to start. We said last time. So these are the points that we covered last time. And now we're going to go to the other four verses that are left. Actually, three. Three verses left. And we said, we talked about, let me just touch up some things on Alhamdulillah that we probably didn't say last week. So Alhamdulillah says, we praise and thank Allah. Rabbul Alameen declares that Allah is the master. And by, by implying that he's the master, also we know that we are the, the slaves. We are the voluntarily slaves. We are grateful slaves. We're not slaves by force. We, Allah, we, we, when we love Allah, when you say Allah, you will automatically gratefully say, please, I want to be your, I want to be your slave. We are, Islam is not, it's not by force. There's no compulsion in Islam. So when Allah says, Alhamdulillah, and shows you how wonderful, how loving he is, and just Alhamdulillah, just that one phrase, Rabbil Alameen, he's the master of all the worlds. Like we said, the human, jinn, uh, the jamad, uh, you know, solid matter, trees, the space, the galaxies, everything. And also the people is another thing. There's another also, which I didn't say last week. Allah is... So Alam, when you go to California, you say, oh my God, uh, let's say people who are in New York, you know, hustle and bustle, they go to the Midwest, or they go to Georgia, let's say, or they go to California, they say, oh my God, people are nice, people are happy, not grouchy like New Yorkers are. New Yorkers have the reputation that they're grouchy, but not necessarily. But when you go to California, you see clean, happy, sunny, you say, oh my God, that's a different world, don't we? Different world, we say. You go to Georgia, you say, oh my God, that's a... you go to Malaysia and Indonesia, you see, people smile. The th if you go to uh, Thailand, it's called the, the land of the thousand smiles. People are smiling. People say, hello, how are you? You're like, oh my God, that's a different world. So Allah is also Rabbil Alameen, the world. Rabbil, the, the Arabs, the Chinese, the Indians, the Pakistanis, the Russian. He is Rabb. Each one is Alam. Each one is Alam. That's also subcategorization of the Alameen segments. He is the Rabb of everyone. So you, we don't have to look like Arab to be Muslim. You don't have to dress like Arab to be Muslim. You can be Muslim, Chinese, you can be Muslim, Russian, you can be Muslim anywhere. Because Allah is your Rabb and he's the Rabb, he's the Rabb of everyone. The Chinese, the Muslim, the Arabs, the, the non-Muslims, the, the solid, the, the galaxies. He is the Rabb of the different categories of people. Rabbul Alameen. Each, each category is different Alam. If you think about it in that realm also, that's what it means. Anyway, so, so by saying he's Rabbul Alameen, he's automatically saying we are his slaves. We are voluntarily agreeing to be slaves because when, when Allah is talking, you know, had the, the Fatiha, He said, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. You would not praise and you would not thank Allah if you don't believe in Him. So we automatically, it's given that we are Muslims. When He says, when you start reading Fatiha, you know, Christians don't read the Fatiha, just don't read. When you're reading the Fatiha, that means you already have Iman in your heart, but you want to strengthen the Iman. So He said, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So you already are Muslim, you're already looking for more. You're looking for more love, more mercy, more actions, more do, more things to do as Muslims. So we already are Muslims. When you say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, you already are submissive to Allah. You already want to be submit and please and worship and obey everything he tells you. So 
رب العالمين. So we are grateful slaves. We're not just any slave. When the slave is a slave, as we said last week, slave is 24-7. The slave never says anything unless the master tells him to. If you, if you don't tell you move, you sit. If he tells you jump, you say how high. You have no free will. You have nothing. You only do as you're told. That's it. You cannot add. You cannot say, no, I don't want, I want to look for different career options. No, 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 different career options. <laughs> Your career is to be a slave. You have no choice in seeking other opportunities, especially for slaves. But we are slaves, which is even higher. Slaves by our own wills. So that means we are more eager to please Allah. We're not forced. Islam doesn't force anyone to be Muslim. When you enter Islam, you enter voluntarily. So you are more eager to please. You are more eager. You're a higher level of slave. Not necessarily for slaves. That's, I just want to show you that. And then we talked about the word ihdina, which is a beautiful word, which we're going to talk about a lot in a little bit. So, so notice that when Allah says, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, He defined the relationship between us and Him. We are, He is the master, we are the slaves. Done. There's no questions asked there. So I hear some noise in the background. I'm not sure who has his mic on. But that, because being, I'm so ADD that I get distracted, I see if there's any little noise or any little interruption. But anyway, if you can silence that mic, I would appreciate it. So he says, Rabbul Alameen, meaning that we said, and that makes the relationship between us and Allah very vividly clear. We are slaves, we worship. That's it. He is the master. He orders us what to do. He tells us, he guides us. Vividly clear. There's no questions asked. It's vivid. It's clear as day. We our job, our purpose, our purpose for being created is to worship. And that also is defined in the first three ayahs. The first three ayahs just show us what are we born for. The second three ayahs at the end show us how. So the first three ayahs are about the why. Why? Why did we get born? To serve. The, the how always shows up. Once you know your why, once you really get to know who Allah is from these three ayahs, the first three ayahs, then the how to just shows up by itself because you're eager to look for how to please him. You will do anything, anything, anything to please him if you really love him from the first three eyes. And we all do, obviously. So once that, once the how shows up, the why automatically will, will show, or the how automatically will show up. Once the why is clarified, which the first three eyes clarify, I'm sorry, let me, maybe I said it wrongly. Once the why is clear from the first three eyes, why are we born? Because of worship. Then the how, how do we worship, shows up automatically. You have to know your why for you to know your how. Okay. So I don't know if that's too technical, but you understand what I mean. So, <clears throat> so we cannot object to anything that Allah wants us to do. We cannot pick and choose. We cannot say, you know what, I want to pray three times. I don't want to pray fast Ramadan, but on my own time. But I, I want to worship. Uh, I think I'm getting a phone call. Uh, Nadia, how are you with me still? Maybe I don't know if somebody interrupted the. No, the Zoom. You, you're still with me? Okay, I'm getting a phone call that's why. Right. But yeah. I cannot block it because then I cannot use the phone for the Zoom, so I do apologize. Uh, so so we mentioned, and then we talked last week about Ar Rahman Rahim. I want to touch up on some things that we probably didn't touch up upon last week. We said Ar Rahman is, is a general meaning. Now, three things I want you to remember Ar Rahman. I want you to remember that Ar Rahman means extreme. That, which I don't talk, I don't, th I, th I don't think I said these last week. Rahman is general for everybody, is now, for now, for dunya. But also remember three things about Rahman. It's extreme love, it's extreme mercy, it's extreme. Rahman, when you say Ghabban, Ghabban, that means you really, really are angry. You, when you say I'm pissed, it's different. But when you say I'm mad, that means you're really, really mad. When you say I'm hungry, Johan, I'm really, really hungry. When you say Ta'ban, I'm really, really tired. When you say Na'san, I'm really, really sleepy, extremely sleepy. Achan, but also at the same time, so it's extreme, but it also could be fixed. It could, it could go away in one second. If you drink water, your thirst will go away. If you sleep, your sleepiness will go away. If you chill a little bit, go to take a walk, breathe deeply, your anger goes away. If you eat something, it could go away. So it's extreme, but it's also very temporary. It goes away. And it's for the jungle. It's for this. It's right now, right here, right now. When you say, I'm Ghadban, I am mad now, right now, right now, I'm angry. At this point, I'm angry. Means it's right now, right here, right now. It's immediate. It's extreme, but it also goes away quickly. So three things. Extreme, immediately now, right now. When you say, I'm hungry, you don't care what food you got, your wife's going to cook you next week. You want to know what to eat right now? I want to eat now. I want it right now. I'm angry. I'm angry now. I don't care. Next week, I'll be okay. You know? So it's extreme. It's right here, right now, but it also can vanish quickly. So Allah can pull the plug and say, you know what, Syria? We, we don't know. 
Allah only Allah knows why are Syria being punished. Who knows why is you know whatever the Muslims are doing terribly nowadays. Why maybe Allah is angry? We don't know because His rahma could be removed when He chooses to. So Rahman is temporary. It's now and it could be taken away when Allah chooses to. Rahim, two things. I want you to remember two things. Rahim, Rahim is for specific people, for the mu'minin, and it's ever, forever and ever and ever. It's permanent. Rahim is sifa da'ime li Allah. Rahman is sifa mu'akata li Allah. Rahim, two things. It's for the afterlife, number one. It's forever and ever and ever in the afterlife. And it's also for the people who are true believers, who are true worshippers, good slaves, the mu'minun, inshallah. Inshallah, we're, we're among those people. So, so, and also the proof that, <clears throat> the proof, you know, uh, the Rahman, Rahim. So now Allah, if Allah had said a Rahman only, right? That means he is extremely loving, extremely merciful, extremely compassionate, extremely giving. But he also could be, he could just remove it in a quick and second. He could just punish you and take it out. If Allah had said a Rahim, he could take a few needs later on in, in Jannah, but how about now? I'm, I'm hungry now, I don't eat now, I don't eat next week. So he would have just you know, given you the afterlife or the, the delayed response. We want immediate response. So Allah put a pairing. We talked about pairing last week, if you remember. Allah paired Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim to show you that he will take care of our needs now and our needs later. He will take care of us now, take care of us. He will give us provisions now and provisions later. He will mercy us now and mercy us later. It couldn't have been said any better. Ar Rahman for right now, right here. Ar Rahim for later. So he, we all covered. If you're Muslim, you are covered. If you're kafir, you can be benefiting from now, but you're not going to get the Rahim. So you can get Rahman, you can get Rahim, and 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 vice versa. Some people could get, you know, they could really be struggling now. The poor people, the blind, the, the hungry, the disadvantaged people, the handicapped people. They're not really getting Rahma in this, or they think they're not. They are getting Rahma, of course. We don't doubt Allah's Rahma. But they feel like they're not getting a good fair shake in this dunya. But they would be rewarded in the akhirah tremendously. Subhanallah, I have an Imam Pakistani, Imam friend of mine. His son is 13 year old Hafiz. He knows the Quran verbatim from Pakistan. Gandhi goes to that mosque. He told me he just died, the kid with Kurukimia. 13 year old kid. Yeah, it's hard. The sequence should be grandparents, parents, then children. When you reverse the order, it is devastating. So the father, the imam, although his imam is Hafiz and his 13-year-old son who died is a Hafiz. Pakistanis, they don't even speak a word of Arabic, neither one of them. But they, the imam memorized the Quran at age six. His son is 13, I don't know, he memorized it, but his son just died last week. The father, although he has deep iman, he just couldn't bear it. He packed and went back to Pakistan. He's devastated, subhanAllah. So these people, that live, this little kid, he, you know, he, he was born with leukemia. He struggled all his life. And it seemed to him, it seemed like, you know what, I didn't get a fair shake. He really didn't get a fair shake. I'm 63 years old and I'm bouncing off the walls. You know, we're, we're lucky. We're the lucky ones. A lot of people don't make it to our age. A lot of people think they don't have immediate rahmah from the rahman. But they will get compensated in multitudes from the rahim and the akhirah. So it's a balance. Allah knows what, you know, we don't, we don't question Allah. We do what we have to do and we leave to him what he has to do. We don't question that. We say, Samirna wa ba'na. That's it. We don't know more than that. We have seen to how much we know. We think we know, but we really have a, a cap. Anyway, so the proof that Allah is merciful, the proof that Allah is loving all the time, now and, and hereafter, is in Surah Al-Isra, when he says, We will give those, the ones who don't believe, the ones who are bad, the ugly, the bad, the evil, the, 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 and we will give those, the believers, the ones who worship all the time, So he he will give the Tughiyan, whatever they want, the Thaghis, the one who transgress, and he will give the worshippers the, the, what they need. He will give everybody, whether in this dunya or akhara or in both. So subhanAllah, he's always, his mercy is non-stop, continuous, even, even, you know, the believers as well as the non-believers, the good, the righteous ones, as, as well as the bad and evil ones, the compassionate, as well as the indifferent and the uncaring, the empathic, righteous leaders, as well as the tyrant leaders, the Muslims as well as the non-Muslims. Maybe I should follow my notes because I have to write down here. Yeah. The good, the bad, the ugly, and all that is in between gets from the mercy of Allah. We also said that the special karama or special blessing is reserved and bestowed upon the believing Muslims, the obeying Muslims, not all Muslims, the Muslims that really, really are truly Muslims. 
And that's the special karama that Allah reserves from Rahim for, for those people in the Akhirat. May Allah make us among those people. Okay. So we, we made some distinction between Rahman and Rahim, and I shared with you three other things about Rahman and two about Rahim that we didn't share last week. So take it for it is. If you have any further questions, I have more information here, but I'm going to, because it interests them, I'm going to skip through it. So, so we are actually, you know, dunya is vanishing. Look, look how, look at the pairing. Look at the pairing of the words Ar Rahman Rahim. When he paired these words together, Ar Rahman Rahim, he put them together to, to cover all bases. But look at the beautiful pairing. So, Dunya is vanishing. Dunya, the nowadays, is vanishing, right? And the afterlife is continuous. So dunya is vanishing and change of the dunya is guaranteed. Change will happen whether you want to or not. You cannot stop change. The minute you're born, you start dying. Your cells start decaying the first minute you're born. So we're all in the same. It's one way ticket. There's no way. There's no way of reversing that order. You are dying the minute you're born. So listen, look at this. this. Draw, I draw similitude between Rahman Rahim and the dunya and the akhirah. That's pairing, in my, in my opinion. So the time changes, our age changes, our health changes, our fortunes change, our health changes, the beauty changes, right? Our cells begin to decay, the, as I said, the minute we're born. We are all decaying. By the second, as we sit here and talk, we are decaying. I'm getting older. By the second, my cells are dying in millions and millions, as I'm talking to you now, whether we realize it or not. It's a change is automatic. Change is guaranteed. Change is a law of life, just like gravity is. There's nothing you can do to stop change. You can take all the botox, you can pull and tug and do whatever you want to do. You will do augmentation. Men can take testosterone, can take growth hormones, can do whatever. Gravity will win. Always, always, always. Death will win. Always. Nobody gets out alive. So it's vanishing. The earth is vanishing. Ar Rahman is vanishing. Subhanallah. But the good deeds that you do are everlasting. You know, Ibn Saleh, Amal Saleh, right? Is somebody who will actually do things. Alam Nafir, which we are benefiting from at this point. Those are everlasting. You will get paid over and over and over again in the Akhirah. That's beautiful pairing between Rahman Rahim and Dunya and Akhirah. So Rahman is for Dunya, Rahim is for Akhirah. But look how, look at the reactions. The things that you do today will vanish because nobody gets out alive. We all get back. And the things that you do that are everlasting, such as charity, such as Al Quran, such as Al Nafi, uh, you know, maybe something sabil, continuous charity, will pay in multitudes forever and ever and ever again. So take the money from these local banks and deposit in the, in the Akhira Bank, as we said last week. And the currency for that bank is action, is smile, not knowledge. Your knowledge doesn't impress anybody, doesn't benefit anybody any iota if you do not work with that knowledge. You have to put the knowledge. That's the whole meaning of the Fatiha. Take the knowledge. Put it to action. Otherwise, there's no lemah. You will only have glory if you change your knowledge into actions. Otherwise, you're not going to have glow. You're not going to have a shine. You're not going to have, you're not going to move anything. You're not going to move the needle one bit. You're not going to help anybody one iota if you don't put your knowledge to work. In fact, you will even get punished because you're holding knowledge, because you are depriving other people from the gift that Allah gave you. Allah gave you knowledge. People that know should share more. People that know should do more, should give more. People who don't know, they cannot just play stupid because they don't, I don't want to do much. I don't want to know. <laughs> it's really on all of us. So having more means you automatically have to give more, whether knowledge, whether money, whether actions, whether energy, whether whatever. Knowledge or, or, or blessings have to be shared, have to be put to work. Otherwise, you will get punished. You get punished because Allah chose you from those people who whom, whom never get the knowledge that you have. Why are you hoarding it? Why aren't you working with the knowledge? Are you really congruent with, with, your, with, with your theology? Are you congruent with your actions? Are your actions in line with being Muslims? If you have not, if you, yeah, I know, I pray, I pray. Okay, if you don't, if, you don't, if you're not compassionate, if you don't smile, if you don't invite people into Islam, if you don't do da'wah, if you don't really help the poor and feed the hungry and take care of people, your Islam is, is null and void. Your Islam would be punishment on you. Wallahi, that's my thinking. Anyway, I could be wrong, but inshallah, yeah, I'm, but Knowledge has to be implied, otherwise it's useless. It does not impress me. Well, you know, I had, I had money, I had things. Money does not impress me. People who are rich, you know, they have big house. You know, it's good for them. I don't want it. You know, people that have degrees, I'm Dr. So-and-so, I'm so so I'm Muhammad So-and-so, I'm have, look at me, car, look at my house. Haba and Mansura, it does not impress me. Conduct, actions, how are you showing up is what's impressive. How are you showing up day to day with all those gifts you claim you have? What, what are you doing with it? You have the knowledge. How are you applying it? That's impressive. 
That is integrity. That is congruency between your theology and between your beingness. What, are you being Muslim or are you just being stupid Muslim? It is, they're not one and the same. <laughs> the Quran says that movement is bad, but also those people who have knowledge and don't work are even worse than both categories. There, there are worse people that have knowledge and don't do anything with it. Why are you holding the knowledge? It's not yours in the first place. It was gifted to you. Do something productive. Move the ball forward. Make it easy. Look around you. People are hurting. People are dying. Look, it's all around you. Everybody is in pain. What are you doing? You know, if you're on a ladder, if you're up on a ladder, you should reach down and help a human, a fellow human. Forget Muslims. Everybody. Everybody. And the higher hand is always better than the lower hand. You should be seeking knowledge. You, see, you should be seeking improvement. You should be seeking continuous, never stop. Never stopping growing. You should be continuous improvement all the time. Can I? Constant and never ending improvement. Can I? C A N I. Constant and never ending improvement. It's a duty on every Muslim because we are Ummat Akra. We are Ummat Learn. We are Ummat Expand Your Horizon. We are Ummat Do More. We are Ummat Give More. That's what we are as Muslims. So if you're not doing that, shame on you, I think. And, and maybe Allah will punish you. I don't know. Alhamdulillah. We don't know. But say, mind Allah. But I believe, honestly, it just makes sense to me. If you have knowledge, you're not doing it to put it to work. You are not, you're not going to be favored, in my opinion, but I could be wrong, alhamdulillah. We'll just move on. So that's the digression. That's why, you know, some, sometimes you see me just go off, off the path, because I think it's important to drive that point home. We do not have time. And Madiha, if, if you, you said, maybe you were suggesting that I do Damlan, I do Surat Asad. We do not have time to waste people. Allah Azim. We have 20, 10 years, 20 years, most of us in the 50s and 60s. We have 20 years, if we're lucky, maybe you have one minute, who knows? We cannot waste time watching stupid soap operas or watching TV or watching the news or playing social media. I, wallahi, wallahi, I try maybe 20, 20 hours a day. I mean, I don't sleep much, honestly. I'm just trying always, all, all I do is Islam. All of you, yeah, watch some video, yeah, read some book. Yeah, read Quran, yeah, learn. He said, yeah, I'm learning, I'm, re I'm learning the maqamat now. I'm really, you always, you have to be continuously growing because I love this religion. I am so lucky that I get sick and I turn to Allah, wallahi, azim. I don't, I cannot waste any minute. I feel I'm always coming short. I can. There's not enough hours in the day for me to worship Allah. Wallahi azim. And we should all be that way. We should all be. They're not not just me. I'm not boasting. I'm not saying I'm anything special. I'm sure you all are. Maliha is is my hero. Maliha is my example. She never stops giving. She never stops learning. Never ever 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 ever. I never see Maliha depressed. You never see her. She's probably tired. How could she be depressed? She is giving. When you are giving, you're loving. When you're loving, you are feeling good. You feel. See, you feel, when you love, you feel abundant. It's coming from a place where there's more of. When you're loving, you're giving. Your Madiha is the most loving person. Wallahi, I'm not saying this in front of her, but I say that behind her. She is the most loving person. I got the honor to know. She's my teacher. She never is bored one second. She's always doing something. She, and I know what's interesting. She's 65, 66, but her, she is always has more to give. She is more, more active than all of us when we we're doing the feeding. She's the one who's running all over the place. She's all over the place. You know why? Because it stems from a good place. It stems from love. It stems from pleasing Allah. She's always doing something good for everyone, for everybody, for herself and for everybody. Because you cannot give what you don't have. You have to learn. You have to educate. You have to get strong yourself. That's wasiya. Wasiya in Islam. That's Islam wants you to be as big as you can. If you have problems, you, have, you need to be rich. If you have problems, I prefer you arrive at your problems in a limousine. Then arrive at your problem in a little hupti or a Uber. Why not? Have money because you can do more. You can give more. Have knowledge because you can help more. Have more love because you can give more. Why not? You have to cultivate everything. You have to be the best at everything, not just one thing. So that's a different conversation, but I just had to drive that point home. We don't have time to waste. Please use every minute you have. Anyway, so I'm going to, okay. So we talked about three things in Rahman. We talked about two things in Rahim. So... Look, Allah mercy to his creation is extreme. Even he gives it to everyone. Even Pharaoh. Even Pharaoh. Pharaoh, as he was drowning, Jibrail, I, I just watched the other day, Jibrail. So, even as Pharaoh is drowsing, uh, drowning, I'm sorry, Allah would have forgiven him if he said, after he killed hundreds, maybe millions of Jews. He says, if he had said, as he was drowning, if he had said, Allah would have forgiven him. Even Pharaoh, Allah has mercy for him. So Jibra'il goes down in the water and he was throwing sand in his, in his mouth. <laughs> it says, that's what he says. So Allah, Allah says, and he says, I don't know if it's Hadith, Qudsi, I don't know if it's Quran, I don't know, but I read Umar Sulaiman was saying that Allah told, told Jibra'il, he said, I know that you were throwing sand in his mouth. So he doesn't say, but even if he had raised his finger to imply that he believes in Allah, he said, I would have forgiven him. Fir'aun, 
Come on. The Hitlers of the world, the Zionists, the Israeli Zionists, Allah forgives. Allah has mercy on them. They eat, they breathe just like we do. The Bashar Assads, the Trumps, the Bidens, the Putins of this world, they all get from the mercy of Allah. And they don't deserve it most of the time, honestly. They're just, Allah's mercy is general. Ar-Rahman is general. Temporary. Temporary. When they die, Allah's going to punish them. But he will He will meet them. He will just give them whatever they're looking for. To even go further into, into uh, darkness, you know, so... We talked about that. So Rahman is general, is temporary, and it's extreme, and it's right now, right, right here. You know, a Rahim captivate, you know, captures two things: specific to the righteous Muslims. We said that. I'm just repeating it. And it's continuous and never ceases. It's for the Akhirah. It's for the dwellers of paradise. May Allah make us among those dwellers of paradise. So, that's it. Okay. By the way, if anyone has any questions, any feedback, any comments, any improvements at the end of this thing if you object to anything i say please say it at the end make notes and i like challenge me if you think i'm saying something wrong, i accept i love challenge so challenge me on that maybe i can maybe i said it wrong i can clarify so that's 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 what i want to say here so okay. So if this material is not really your, your cup of tea, it's not suitable to you, if you think I'm loud, obnoxious, whatever, you know, you can, you're free to let, so I will not judge you, you're free to let off, you know, but I, I cannot believe that this is not beneficial to anybody, honestly, I'm not saying, it's just not my, not my information, it's information I gathered from people, it's not mine, none of, you know, none of it, maybe I add a little bit of my take on it, but it's really not my, my information, so I don't understand how anybody could not be interested in this, and learning this stuff, because it only draws you closer to Allah, and it makes you a better Muslim, I think. So I appreciate each one of you, each feedback, each question, each objection, each feed, whatever. Just share with us at the end, please. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to... Okay. So I, uh, people that have knowledge and don't, and don't share it, I think are people that are not congruent. They have no integrity, actually. And it used to bother me in the past when people just, you know, don't don't come into the meetings or just, I'm like, come on, man, this is good stuff. Why? No, you know what? I'm like, I can't change anybody. You know, I'm like, the Arabs have a saying, saying, you can you can take a donkey to a well, to water well, but you can never force him to drink. So I can only open Islam is is open invitation, no compulsion, no sense. So I used to get mad in the past. I'm like, how could you be out party? Because I tell people I call them Madi Hamas, I'm very persistent, I'm very persistent, and I have high energy. So I keep reminding them, I keep reminding them the day before, I call them up by phone, Madi Hamas, like, leave them alone. But I'm like, no, 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 they need it, they need, they need the stuff. But then even with that, people <laughs> maybe people were running away from me because they were scared. The next day, I'm like, how come you don't come? You say, promise me 10 times you're going to come. It's like, yeah, oh my God, I forgot. I was playing hookah. I was I was playing shedde. I was playing smoking hookah. I went to whatever. I'm like, are you serious? But then I'm, I'm like, okay, just let it be. I just only invite you. If you don't like it, you can log off, please. I'm not forcing anybody. You're not a hostage. And you're definitely not a donkey. So, so you can do whatever you want. Uh, so the Arab Muslims also have the, have the same. Also, it says, seek knowledge, even if it's, even if you have to travel as far as China, because back in the days there was no internet, there was no GPS, there was no, you know, uh, airplanes. China used to think is the furthest corner of the earth. So the Arabs say, seek knowledge. That's a common saying. Arab. Seek knowledge, even if it's in China. And that's that's a wonderful thing. We should be Muslims. We should be always seeking knowledge because we are Ummat Akra. Because the first commandment that came, read, expand. That's the first order we received from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala: is expand, grow. So read, it means a lot of things, not just read a book, expand, learn, open up your mind, expand your horizons, grow, continuously give, give is also part of read, look it up in the dictionary, Iqra. there's has many synonyms, 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 whatever it's called, so, <clears throat> okay, we're, we're done with that, let me just move on to, okay, so, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, ar rahman Rahim. so Allah told us that he's loving before he told us he's rabb if you notice alhamdulillah praise and thank why would you praise and thank someone who is not loving so allah started with with how loving he is and compassionate and merciful to us before he said i'm the i'm your master so look at look at look at the the eloquence of the language so he specified that he loves us before he told us i'm your rabb and then we submit fully we said and then he said i'm malik Yamadin. he judgment is up to him only i don't judge you you don't judge me i don't say i don't he is the only Malik. He is the only sovereign. He is the only uh, high supreme court judge. 
And the court that really matters, the Akhirah, is the only court that we should worry about. We shouldn't worry about this dunyawi courts. You know, we should worry a little bit, but we should not be concerned. The main concern should be that court where we all have to answer to Allah, where your body parts are going to say what you've done. When your tongue, you say, you know, I had knowledge, but this guy didn't want me to share. I, I could have hit send and shared it with everybody, but my finger, my fingers will say, but he told me not to do so. Your body parts will testify against you. That's the court that you have to worry about. So... He's the only Malik Ibn. Now, we're going to move to because now we're really starting into the, the, the core of what it is. That is called the Qalb, the heart of the Fatiha, the core of the Fatiha. And it's divided into two parts. is about you, we worship, and you only, we ask help from, we, we seek help from. And I'm going to talk about that and I'm going to give you some little nuances that I didn't share with you last time. I said, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman, Rahim, Malik Ibn. Allah, Muhammad, and us. Muhammad is liaison between Allah and us. So there are three parties of us, three persons. Allah, not persons, I'm sorry to say that. I don't know the right way of saying it, but three person tense it's called. So there's Allah, deity, the only one. Muhammad is his messenger. And us, Muhammad is relating to us. The, what was revealed to him from Allah. So three are involved. It's called third person tense in English. So now it goes to, from three, it goes to, uh, that, that's monologue. That's monologue from Allah. Allah is telling us this, 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 this. It's one person who's dictating or who's, who's informing, I should say, not dictating. But it goes to, to two people, to dialogue. So it's a monologue. This monologue means one person is just saying and we're just receiving. We are on a receptive end, the first, the first thing. The second part, we are on the people that take action end. We are the doers. The first one, we are the receivers, the first three ayahs. The second three ayahs are the ones we are the ones that do something with that knowledge. So now, watch this. So it comes from three-person tense to two-person tense. In Arabic, that's called iltifat, meaning, oh, what happened? We're talking about three, now we're talking about two. So when it says, Iyaka na'abidu wa I'm going to break this down. There's a lot of, I could spend hours on this alone, by the way, but I'm just going to share with you the, the main points. So Iyaka na'abidu, it goes to two-person tense. From three-person, just us and Allah. It's hotline, direct conversation, Allah. Dialogue, not monologue, dialogue with Allah. Iyaka, now you and you and Allah now. You say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Rahman, Rahim, Malik, Yomidin. Iyaka na'abidu. Just me and you. Iyaka na'abidu. Or Iyaka a'abidu. But we're worshipping as a group, as ummah. Iyaka na'abidu wa Iyaka nasta'in. The dialogue, the conversation between you enter into Allah's realm now. You are talking to Allah directly. You're saying, we only worship you, O Allah, and we only seek help from you. Now that's not all. Al-Tifat meaning, okay, we're talking three cents. Now look, what happened? Now we're talking... To wake you up if you're gonna kind of dozing off as you read the Quran, because most people do when they read, they don't understand the verses. That's what we should learn. Try to understand what we're reading so you stay alert. When you don't understand some things, you kind of brain, your brain loses interest, so you get sleepy, you start dozing off. We all do that, and I'm, I know you all do that too. So the iltifat is there for reason to just alert you, just smack you around and wake up like what happened. You know, the iltifat means you turn, turn your head like what happened. We're talking about two now. We're talking about three now. We're talking about one, and there's. There's even more than that. There's it goes. There's one surah. It goes from three to one directly. Uh, Allah, Allah says, I, I forget what surah. Maybe Ibn Hakim. He says, Allah is telling Muhammad, "Wa ibadi anni. If my slaves, my obedient slaves, ask you about me, O Muhammad, so three, Allah, Muhammad, and the slaves, us. So Allah says, move over, Muhammad. I'll tell them. Fa inni qarib. I'm close. He says. It goes from third to first. Muhammad is out of the picture, the second part of the eyes. He said, Iza sa'alaka ibadi anni fa'inni qareebun mujib da'a. He went from three to one. So that's really extreme case of the tifat. Like what happened? We're talking about three, now we're talking about one. And also the past and the present and all these things. But anyway, we're going to stay with this verse here. Look how beautiful this. Iyaka na'abidu wa yakum sa'in. Went from three to two. We hotline with Allah. Now, Allah says, I divided the, the fatiha into two halves. The first half, right before this ayah, and the second half is after. The first half is, is for me, says Allah. It's about who me, is who Allah is, what, you know, his, his, his attributes, basically. The second half is for my slaves. And, and my slave, whatever my slave wants, I'm going to give. He says, He says, whatever my slave wants, I'm going to answer that prayer. So Fatiha will, ans will answer anything, will save you from anything, but not on your calendar, on Allah's calendar. If you have sincerity in your direction, if you have sincerity in your request, Allah will reward you definitely for sure on his time, not your time. His calendar, not your calendar. So that's where people kind of, oh, I prayed, but Allah didn't, didn't answer my prayer. Because maybe you're not sincere. 
Maybe you want it right now, but Allah doesn't want it for you right now because it's not good for you. He wants it for you maybe next year or maybe in Akhirah. Who knows? Who know? We don't know. We are. We have a ceiling here. We cannot go beyond that. We just do what we're told to do and leave the rest to Allah. So watch. Also has a nice, unique thing, which is not really used in Arabic. So it's also it's called hasr in Arabic or constricting or narrowing down. Narrowing down to only one subject. Watch. In Arabic, it says the kaf. You can, those non-Arab speakers, I'm sorry. But iyaka, there's kaf in it at the end. Kaf is the one you're talking to. When you talk to someone, you say, Ahibuka, I love you. You're talking to someone. Uh, you know, Atba'uka, I follow you. Kaf means the mukhatab, the one that you're talking to. It pertains to him. It directs you to who you're talking to, the kaf. So normally, na'biduka, wanasta'iduka, normally. So we worship you and we... Uh, we ask you for help. We ask we ask help from you. But now this is here, so you, you can have, but here the order is reversed. The kaf is not at the end. Na'biduka, the kaf, the letter kaf comes at the end. The sound kaf, na'biduka. But here it's reversed. It said iyaka. So the kaf is moved, flipped around. The word, that word is flipped around, divided into two words. To cause something called hasr, or narrowing down, or honing in on one thing. Iyaka na'bidu means... So na'biduka, if it was left the way Arabic, proper Arabic is, non-Quranic non Arabic is, I should say, not proper, non-Quranic Arabic says na'biduka. We worship you, but then that is open-ended. We can worship you, but I can worship somebody else. I can worship Allah, and I can worship my body. I can, I can have big lips, I can have big whatever. I can have, a, you know, I, I'm a love I can go to gym like gym rat 24 hours, eight days a week, right? I can be gym rat. I'm worshiping my body. I, have, I make so much money, I worship money, I worship my wife, I worship my children. So that's not restrictive to Allah only when you say na'buduka. But when you flip it, you say iyaka, it, it's, it's honing in, it's hasr, it's narrowing down on one thing. You only, it makes it specific to Allah. Iyaka na'budu. We worship only you, we don't worship anybody else. I can, you know, the other one is I can worship you, but I can worship other deities, other things, other subjects, others, other... <laughs> Habits, bad habits, gambling. I can worship gambling. I can worship, uh, you know, pornography. I can worship whatever. People worship different things. They worship themselves. They worship their kids. They worship their, they worship their cars, some people. They watch their cars every day like it's, like it's going to come to life. How silly is that? But it cuts through all the chase. It says, we worship only you, Allah. That's it. Nobody else. That's hasad. That's amazing thing. Iyakana is saying the same thing. I don't want to repeat the same thing. We all see. We only see kept from you only. Nasta'inuka means we seek help from you, but I seek help from Maliha, maybe Maliha. Or I can seek help from my doctor. I count on my doctor healing me. Or I can count on my father guiding me all the time. No, 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 no. You do it to a point, but really, ultimately, you only seek help from one source, Allah. You only do worship one source, Allah. So this, the way they flip the letters, means constrictive, pointing into Allah only, nobody else. That's what. Now, also not, or not notice when you talk about pairing. The first three ayahs we said are about Allah, right? Alhamdulillah, we're talking about Allah. Rabbil alameen, Malik yawmadeen, all about Allah. That's Allah just himself. But the, this, this ayah, is also split into two. The first is ibadah, ibadah worship. The second is isti'ana, asking for help. Split the two. The, the one that's closer, the one that's closer to Allah is by ibadah. Subhanallah. He didn't say, iyaka nasa'i wa iyaka na'abudu. He could have said that. It's the same meaning. But he said, iyaka na'abudu, because that's closer to Allah. So Allah is closer than our jugular vein. Look at look at the look at beautiful pairing. Allah he says, Ana minnam. He's closer to us than our He made us. He knows us more than anybody else. Nobody knows us. Nobody loves us as much impossible as our maker. But he's also so close to us that he actually put the ibadah close to him because that belongs to Allah. The ibadah belongs to Allah. Look how beautiful that is. See that that, that beauty in the language? Wa we, we are asking for help. We're the one who are gonna do the things. We're the one who's going to take knowledge and transfer it to actions. So he made Iyakana Sa'in closer to us, closer to the man. Iyakana Abidu, closer to God. Subhanallah. Closer to the master is the ibadah. Closer to the slaves is the isti'ani, the know-how. But also, look at that. Look how, I mean, pairing, I can talk. So in the, in the Fatiha, I'm going to share some couple of the pairings before I forget because I'm all over the place. Uh, let me just show I, I made... I ran out of time, so I started writing notes, you know, instead of uh, typing them because I, I had no time to time. I was listening and just copying as, as, as I could. Okay. So I'm going to talk about some of the pairings just to, because I'm afraid I'm not going to get to it if I get distracted as I usually do. 
So pairing is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim is one pair. Alhamdulillah, Alhamad, Wal-Thana, Wal-Shukr is another pair, right? Iyaka na'abudu al-ibadeh, na'abudu is paired with with close, closer to Allah, closer, because Allah is closer to us than our jugular vein. Isti'ana is closer to the man and, and the action, because isti'ana, you're asking for guidance, you're asking for for how, how to do things, and that's that's our job, not Allah's job. So Allah's job is to tell us who he is and how he wants the instructions. The slave does not act for that. The master tell him what to do. Allah sent us what to do, and we are just doing because isti'ana is our responsibility. Is action is our responsibility. Knowledge is Allah's responsibility to give to give to us, and then it's up to us to do whatever we want to do with that knowledge. And that's so beautiful. Some of the parents I lost in the paper. I'll find out to them now. But I I just wrote down some parents that came to mind that are just beautiful. And I want to share them with you. Hopefully, I'll share them with you down the line if I find the paper. Anyway. Okay, so Adam Amal Lama. We said that many times before last week. I said it many times. And I also emphasize the point that we have no time to waste. Please do not waste time. Wallahi, if you knew how well, if we knew all of us, I'm, when I say if you, I mean me too included. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm learning as I'm speaking. If you knew how well, the calamities that would befall us on, on the day of judgment, the, the, the horror that we're going to face on the day of judgment, and the difficulties. And wallahi, we would not laugh. We would cry. Allah, we would laugh very little bit. Wallahi, we will not feel lazy. Wallahi, we will... We will have no time to waste. I feel, I, I mean, you know, there's only 24 hours. I wish there was more hours in the day because I want to worship Allah the whole time. Wallahi, I feel guilty. I feel short. And I'm running like I do more than most people in one day, I think, maybe, maybe not, than most people do in a week. Wallahi, I, I don't stop. Alhamdulillah, that's a blessing that I can do that. But even then, I feel I'm, I'm falling short. Wallahi, I feel I'm guilty because I wasted, I don't pray, I remember, I don't pray for like 55 years. I was on and off, on and off, but never really. I was always a decent person, I think. Maybe uh, decent is subjective, but I say, I'm a good person. I'm, I don't have to pray. Who said you're good? You're saying you're good. That's subjective. You don't, you don't suggest you're good or bad. That's your own view, your own opinion, which could be completely wrong. If I were actually a good person, i say I was a decent person, but if I was a really good person, I would pray. I would follow Allah from the minute I was born. I wasn't doing that. So I'm not really, I can't say I'm a good person. I was decent. I didn't do anything to harm people on intentionally, but who knows? I didn't stop praying until like maybe five years ago when I became ill. Alhamdulillah, I wish I got ill sooner, sooner, sooner. I said that last week, but I feel like I wasted so much time and I just want to make up for lost time. And I really, I, I, I'm not doing enough. Wallahi, I'm not doing enough. I'm all over the place. I have my hands in too many things. I'm helping here, helping there. I'm, like I said, I'm always learning something new. I'm fascinated by anything that has to do with Quran. I don't do, I used to be proud Adiga before. But yeah, I was, I was proud of occasion. Uh, those, those, I really am proud Muslim first, first because Allah doesn't care you're Circassian, you're Arab, you're Jew you're, you're, you're black, you're white you're, the, the, Sawasia, we're all the same I am still proud Circassian I'm not arrogant, I was never arrogant Circassian but I'm still proud but to much, 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 much less degree I am first and foremost I am proud to be Muslim and I am so thankful to Allah He chose us among the Muslims from Ummah Muhammad who is the best that ever walked this green earth not Muslims from Ibrahim or Musa or Isa. We are Muslims from Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best. So we are so, I can never thank Allah enough. <clears throat> and I can never, no matter what I do, I always feel I have, I can never make up for lost time. I wish I became ill, as I said, 10, 20 years ago, because I would have probably be forced to Islam like I have been. I just turned to Allah. I'm so happy now. I, I'm bouncing all day. Wallahi Lazim. I'm making money like below, <laughs> way below poverty line, but it doesn't matter. You know, nobody dies, dies <laughs> like a food, we're all fat here in this country. I am so happier with a little bit of money because I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm detached from this earth. Wallahi Azim, I don't care about anything. I don't care about any arguments, anything. I don't waste my time anymore. I'm getting calmer. I don't push people to attend. If they don't attend, fine. If they don't attend, fine. Because my only purpose is to please Allah and to worship as much as I can, to make up as much as I can for time that's, that I wasted. I hope you guys feel that urgency. It's urgent and important. You know, there's some things that are urgent, but not important. There's something that are important, but not urgent. This matter, I think, is urgent and important because we don't know when they're going to pull the plug on us. We don't know when we're going to die. And nobody gets out of love. We're going to die whether tomorrow or next year. So the investing this time is so precious. That's why Madiha has said, maybe talk. I want to talk about Surat Asr. If you give me the, up the choice, the Asr is about time. To drive home the point that time is of the essence. Time is the only asset that we have, and it's depleting. It's the only asset that, that we have. Money can come and go. Time will definitely go. 
No, you're not going to have any more time than Allah, the, Allah ordained for you. So time is the only limited asset and depend how you use it wisely. And we, since we are at the latter part of the life, I have one foot in the grave already, I'm 63 years old. We should really, 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 really use it wisely. We should not squander time. That's the only thing that you cannot afford to lose because once you lose it, you got to pay dearly. Either completely forever and ever and ever and ever in hell or forever and ever and ever and ever in heaven. And it depends on what you do with this little time that you have left. Time is just a dash between the day you're born and the day you're... Of course, I mean, look at Noah. Uh, again, I'm, diver I'm just digressing all over the place, but it's, I think it's important to drive this point home. Noah, so, alayhi salam, he worshipped and he called people to Islam for 950 years. 950 years. But, but you know what? He, he had only a handful of people follow him. But he will get more reward. You know why he will get more reward than, let's say, Yusuf Estes, maybe? Number one, he's a prophet. Allah chose him. Number two, Yusuf Estes, in one sitting, he had 1,250 people teach The whole congregation, the they group, it's on YouTube, go watch it. All of them, 1,250, they took shahada, one shot under Yusuf Estes. One, one sitting, one hour, two hour lecture, I don't know. But Nuh, alayhi salam, 950 years. And people turn him, people said, you're crazy. People said, even his own son. They weren't mocking him, making fun. What are you making? Boy, you stupid idiot, old man. Senile. They called him all kind of names. So even, even with that, even with that, in the face of rejection, for 900 years of rejection, 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 he persisted. Allah loves the persistent action, no matter how small they are. More than one big, he landed one big victory. Okay, fine. But he actually, the persistence, the stamina he had is, 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 is amazing. 950 years of no, 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 no. He only had a handful of people. You know what? Allah doesn't judge by the results, by the outcome. Allah judges by your persistence, by your intent, by your, by your actions. Allah doesn't judge rewards. Doesn't, here in this court is if you say, okay, what, what college you graduate from? You say Columbia. Ooh, that means, yeah, that, speaks for, that speaks for itself. Results speak in this, in this dunya. And akhirah, it's not results. It's persistent. It's action, it's continuity. Continuity is what matters. The effort, Allah judges you by your effort, not by your results. That's probably a better way of saying it. SubhanAllah. And when I asked Ibrahim, when I asked uh, uh, Nuh how long was your, how long was it, how long was it that you spent, you know, and in dunya, he says, Wallahi, if 950 years, that's a long time. He said, no, 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 Wallahi, it's like I open one door, close one door. 950 years, they, go, they feel like a blink compared to, to eternity. How are we doing with time, Madiha? Uh, Nick, Nick, I'm glad you joined us. How are you doing? We literally started, uh, you know, the actual seven to eight, 15 minutes. I have more 15, 15 minutes more? 15 minutes. Okay, I, I can do like half hour, but it's 15 minutes. So yeah. please silence your mics. So yeah, Noah, who spent 950 years calling people to Islam, went to like a blink of an eye when I asked him, could you imagine our 20 years? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a blur, not even, not even significant. And you know what's also interesting? When Allah took someone who who's saw nothing but turmoil, nothing but problem, nothing but calamities all his life, and he dipped him one dip, one dip in Jannah. He says, have you seen any sorrow, any pain, anything? During it's like, no, nah, Allah. It, it is so powerful, Jannah, that you forget everything that before it. And also the reverse is true. He dipped one guy who had, like, let's say, Trump, who had the money, who had the women, who had the cars, who had the status, who had the significance, who had everything, supposedly, superficially. One dip in Jahannam. He's like, have you seen any na'im? Have you seen any blessings? And you're like, no, Allah, I've seen nothing but sorrow. Because your brain, as I said, can only process one feeling, one thought at a time. You may have synapses here and there, but you really can only take in one input at a time. I know that from from, anatomy, from physiology, from the, my field. But you can be scattered. You get scattered thoughts, and people think, I'm multitasking. No, you're not multitasking. You're doing one task, but you're just jumping around between tasks. It looks like it's multitasking, but your brain can take one stimulus, one input, one feeling at one time. But this could be short synapses, you can go back and forth. But look how one how wonderful Jannah is, and look how hard uh, Jahannam is. One dip and you forget all the all the blessings, or one dip and you forget all the sorrows. SubhanAllah. So that's what I say. But 950 years went like a blur. We have only 15 years, so please use the time wisely. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go talk about the word ihdina. So ihdina, so now we we admit willingly. Gratefully that we are slaves of Allah. We accept it. We fully surrender, fully unconditionally, no questions in the first part that we are slaves of Allah. We agree. There's no grateful slaves but Muslims. A slave is usually forced into slavery, but we are slaves voluntarily to Allah because we love him, because his love is overpowering. But if you really understand, 
Alhamdulillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Malik, Yomadim, you cannot not, not fall apart. You will melt in your seed. So with that, we say, Ahdina Sirat al-Mustaqim. Look at the word Ahdina. You don't say, now you're talking, we said you, you have dialogue with Allah. When you say, Iyaka na'abidu, Iyaka na'abidu, you and me, Allah. You're praying by yourself. There's other people praying, but you are, as far as you're concerned, you are praying with Allah. You're making different demands than this guy next to you. You're asking for different favors than the guy, the guy behind you in front of you. Everyone is solo, hotline with Allah, talking to Allah, dialogue, back and forth. So we say, why would you say Ihdini? Look at how beautiful, again, again, pairing. Let's talk about pairing. Look. It says Ihdina. Ihdina, it shows that you are, it says that we are fully in, we are fully in as one ummah. We all love you. We all are grateful to you. Guide us, all of us. You don't say guide me. You say guide us, all of us, because we're one brothers. We're one people. We're one fabric. We are the we know the Muslim. We are the one who submit fully, unlike the Jews and the Christians that to submit conditionally. You know, they say, "Okay, I'm going to worship, but your angels are your daughters, or I'm going to worship, but Jesus is your son." That is conditional. A slave has no say. We say we hear and we obey. Muslims are the only one that purely monotheistic, monotheistic, really. So we say, "Ehdina," that shows that we are fully in together. We all believe in the same thing together. That's also pairing group. When we say "Ehdina," we say "Ehdi." The Muslims and and Palestine that were being tormented by the Zionists, that are being butchered and left and right. God, have mercy on the ones in Kashmir that are being, their nails being pulled, they're being forced to drink alcohol. Guide the Muslim and, you know, have mercy on the Muslims in China that are being tormented and tortured and raped. In Burma, in Yemen, in Saudi and Syria, all these people have been bombed. You are wishing well for your brothers, for your sisters, because the tide rises all boats. We are one ummah. If the hole is under you or in China, somebody has a hole under him in one boat, we're all going to sing as one unit. We are one people. We are one fabric. We are one group of Muslims. That's unique to Islam. Ehdina is unique to Muslims. The Christian says, Ehdini, Ehdi my friend, as long as he's Christian. Ehdini, Ehdi my Jewish friend, as long as he's Jewish. Because the Quran says, they will not be satisfied with you unless you come on their side. They may, you know, I mean, my Christian friends are wonderful. They're, I cannot help in the back of my mind. I think they are phony. They are not really sincere, but they're because they're trying to pull you on their side. You know, they're kind of smiling in your face, but deep down inside, the Quran tells us, I'm not making this up. It says they will not be satisfied with you unless you come on their side. Islam is not like that. You wish well for every Muslim. Now, there's some sick Muslims, but the majority of Muslims, they wish well for their brethren, for everybody, even non-Muslims. You know, if somebody, if an orphan, you don't care. If somebody's hungry, you don't care. He's Muslim. It's not. We're com we are the most compassionate people. We're uniquely, collectively. We go from singular when we say you know, when you talk, talk to Allah, you go to plural, jama'ah. You go from fard to jama'ah. It's amazing. That's another artifact. Oh, we're just talking about me and Allah. Now we're talking about the whole collective. We're collective body. So we go to plural because there's power in numbers, right? We are all, when you go to Mecca, you see millions of people doing the same thing. There's some power in it that you don't see. There's gravity in it that you don't see anywhere else. So the power is in number. When you go to power, Allah, when Allah says, we, we, he says, Allah, it's only him and the angels maybe, but Allah says we, because Power numbers have power. Same way, same thing here. That's also some, you know, pairing with Allah's way of speaking. We say, eh, you know, we're speaking like Allah speak, like the court. When you go to the court, he says, the court order. We order. What are you doing? You're only one man. You're the judge. Why you say we? When you say we, to have them, you glorify, you magnify. It has more weight. So when we say, eh, you know, we are likening ourselves to the speech of Allah when He says, we. Descended the Quran to you. We reveal to you. It's Allah who revealed it. But He says we because there's power in numbers, perceived power anyway, if nothing else. Okay. So I mean, that also shows that Allah's love, subhanahu wa ta'ala, shows that, that we love Allah, all of us collectively, and that we are eager to worship Him. Just please help us. You're the slave. You're the, we're the slaves. You're the master. Please tell us, all of us, we all of us, all of us love you. We all want to worship you. We all want to please you. We all want to obey you. Please guide us. That's also begging and, and group is much more powerful than begging, you know, single-handedly. So it shows we're asking Allah to please. We're eager to know how, how can we please you? All of us, what can we tell us exactly how to worship you? Because we're ready. We're cooked and ready. That's what we're telling Allah. We're cooked and ready. Just tell us, please show us all of us. We all love you. We all end this thing together. Please show us how to please you. So we're asking collectively because there's power in groups again. How do you like to be worshipped? We want to, as soon as one says, guide us, Ahdina, tell us exactly, exactly how to, to worship you. I, I told us last time, if you don't go in sequence, 
you're going to get somebody else. If you call my number, the, you know, if you switch the numbers, you're not going to get me. You're going to get somebody, maybe the, <laughs> the Chinese massage lady or somebody like that. Who knows? So you have to follow sequence. There's vibration. There's sequence in life. Life has a sequence, has vibration. So you have to follow the recipe of worship that Allah likes, that Allah is pleased with. You can't just worship the way you want to. You want to be pleasing to Allah? You want to be fully submissive? You're going to say, please show me how you want me to worship you. What is most pleasing to you? It shows that we all love Allah. We want specific Directions, specific instructions. And it shows also when we say Ehdina, it shows, you know what, Azima, it shows strong will, please. We we are we are begging, we are eager, we are demanding to show us what pleases you, basically. It shows Azima also commit Ehdina. Those all just little things I, I conclude for myself from that. And I think that's true, honestly. So and you also in the Quran you see Rab and Hudi, Rab and Rab Ehdi, Rab Ehdini, Rab I'm gonna give you some examples, some ayats I record I got from so Allah says. So always with Allah, Rabb, there's always hidayah. There's always asking Allah, show us how. Throughout the Quran, Inna Rabbi sayahdeen. My God is going to guide me, he says, Ibrahim alayhi salam salam. Ehdina sirat al mustaqim. Ehdina ya Rabb. Who are you asking? You talk to Allah. Ehdina, ehdina, give us, show us. Thalik al kitab la rayba fihi. Hudan li muttaqin. Al kitab is Allah's book. There's huda in it. So it's always you find God and huda. God and show us. God and guide us. All the time. Allah guide us. Allah show us. Those people, the Muslims, are on upon guidance from Allah. They're, they're walking with guidance from Allah. So always you'll see a lot of ayat about Huda and linked in with Allah. Okay. When Allah when God talks about the mosquito and how glorified it is, يقولون ماذا أراد الله بهذا مثلا يضل به كثيرا ويهدي به كثيرا Allah Huda so the, Allah guides, he says, he used the mosquito, which is the weakest of his creation. He's like, if you look at the mosquitoes, you, you submit to Allah. Allah shows you how delicate and how magnificent the mosquito is, which we think is, a, is, a, is a, you know, an insect that deserves to be squashed it's, or, or killed. But he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَدُلُّ بِهِ كَثِرًا وَيَهْدِي بِهِ كَثِرًا عَلَى مَثَلَ الْبَعُودَ قُلْنَا هَبُطُوا مِنْهَا جَمِيعًا فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنْ تَبَعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا خَوْفَ عَلَيْهُمْ وَلَا هُمْ يحزنون. Allah says, come down when I think he was talking to Adam, go down and some of you will receive guidance. Those who will receive guidance from you will never go astray and those who will not receive guidance, they will definitely be astray. So Allah says that. So God, guidance all the time. It was a big ordeal for those people, except those, for the people, except those whom Allah guided. Life is a big burden for people, except for those whom Allah guided on the right path. Again, Allah, Huda, Allah guidance all the time. So uh, these clear signs, the Quran and the prophets, did not really come to torment them, but rather to guide them. Subhanallah. So Allah guidance, Allah guidance throughout the whole Quran. These are ones I could gather, but there's more. Obviously, you can find them. I mean, every page, almost every page talks about Allah. Pain and pleasure. Good, bad. Always pairing, pairing, pairing. Ar-Rahman, Rahim, Al-Aziz, Al-Kareem. Al Qawiyul Batin, all the time, Ar Rahman Rahim, pairing, pairing, pairing. The Quran is Masna, Masna, double, 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 all of it, double in thoughts, double in structure, double in, 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 in combining words, all of it. Uh, we still have some time. If you guys want to still go, I can still go if you want. But if, we're, if we can wrap it up, that's fine. I think if you allow me, let's say in three months. Allah, I mean, you could continue talking. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys are not tired. I have a lot more to give you. To understand, Jazakallah khair. How about we'll conclude. Uh, if you want to let, me, let me just say one more thing, please. We'll conclude, but if you allow me three months from now, I leaned heavily on Imam Ali Khan, to be honest with you, and my own my own ideas here and there. But next time, let's say, if you allow me to do this, let's say, for three months, I promise you, I promise you, I'm going to lean on somebody else and I'm going to read the tell you the Fatiha. I'm not going to use any of these things that I share with you, and you're going to say, Oh my God, completely different. It talks to everybody differently. That is the beauty of the Quran. So if you allow me every three months, every six months, I will learn. I will have to go and research. I benefit before I benefit you or I help you benefit. I'm not, I'm sorry. Allah only gives you. I'm just sharing what I'm learning. But I benefit first, firsthand. If you allow me three months from now or six months from now to come back and give you the Fatiha from a different perspective, I think you'll be stunned. You will be completely different. Absolutely. So. That's the depth of the Quran. Absolutely. Subhanallah. You know, I never pay attention myself on the pairing. 
And, uh, but, uh, you know, very few people who appreciate really the Quran, if you understand Arabic, like the word when you said, Iyaka na'budu, because if regularly I want to say, na'buduka, ya Allah. So uh, we add the ka after the verb to make uh, the action purely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But uh, I could uh, add, uh, associate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why I'm worshiping Allah, I could uh, worship others. Um, you know, magnifying other in my life. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he added the ka first, iyaka, you only. Worship me in here, you just terminate the servant and the service purely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the foundation of the monotheism in Islam. We only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not Muhammad, not the, the black stone, not the Kaaba, uh, not our desire, not our opinion. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's word is above and we try as much as to follow and obey as you said inshallah ta'ala. Uh, may Allah reward you uh, uh, many 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 good rewards. I'm sure we all benefited but let's uh, let's ask if anybody wants to you know, participate ask question before I stop recording. Anyone? I think there all went to sleep. <laughs> I must support you guys. Madiha, by the time they answer, look, look. Usually, uh, usually the class, <laughs> yeah. their listener. Oh. What is look, that? Look, look at my last, my last uh, friend that I. Wama salak illa rahmatan alamin. That is. No, 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 no. No, no. Wama. Uh, no, let me see. Wama tasqut, wama yasqut, wama tasqut min warqatin illa yalamuha. Yeah, this, and, this, uh, this ayah to me always, always moved my heart, always, always touched me. Allah, Allah knows every leaves fall off the tree. Actually, I that was magnified for me when I went a uh, couple of months ago to the Smoky Mountain. And I oh, was no. at the top of the mountain and I looked early morning down and seen how many leaves out there. And that verse came in my head. I said, is um, that really Allah knows every leaves fell off this tree? There are billions and billions oh, and billions right and billions of trees, Allah. billions Amazing of trees, of and yet Allah knows every leaf when it falls. He He is yeah. when and He how has and when. knowledge. Allah, that move that verse brings me to tears many times. Absolutely. Anyone? Oh, we have a special guest here, Doctor Nick. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? He's my, he's my buddy. Yeah. Nick, Nick, what, Nick, why don't you say? Why don't you? He has a fascinating journey, actually. He's a revert. Nick is a revert. He was Macedonian, like Bobby, by the perspective of Macedonian. Nick has the most amazing story. Maybe you can share just a little highlights, Nick, if you don't mind. No, he, most, of the, most of the sisters are revert also here. Yeah, but he, he's amazing. This guy hit the ground running. He's ready to do da'wah. He's, he's already doing many things already. Inshallah. In Islam, he says his, 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 his motto is Islam saved my life. And he has maybe, maybe you can share it, maybe you leave it some other time because his, his story is long. But if you share some highlights, I think people will be astonished what you've been through actually. But maybe, maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure maybe if we have time for that. But he, his well, story. In a discussion, we have plenty of time because people you know, free to leave. Okay, okay. Maybe, maybe after after we stop you recording. But he, his story is most moving, I think to me. I'm, I'm just bewildered. What he's been through and what he became out of it—it's really, really stunning. I, I, I love him. I respect him immensely for for being him. Honestly, it's just amazing what he went. He's been through, and he hit the ground ready to serve. He wants to do da'wah. He wants to join you with the da'wah. He wants. By the way, oh, good thing that I remember this. If you guys, if you guys wanna, we wanna establish a da'wah team that systematizes da'wah. People talk da'wah, and everybody has their own way and. No, no, no thought pattern, no system, no methodology, no system, no sequence. We should all, you know, if anybody, if you know, or somebody who's interested in doing da'wah, who's intelligent, who's smart, and who's methodical, or if you yourself are interested, we can, we, we're going to, we're going to partner up. We're going to come up with the, with the way to do proper da'wah that gets results consistently as best as possible. And we're going to come up with the thought pattern, with the methodology. Nick and I, we're going to be working on that. We're going to be attending seminars da'wah. We're going to be developing a system. That we're gonna teach everybody for free how to do da'wah and get results because there doesn't seem to be there's a pattern, there's no system. Madi Hassan me send me link. I still haven't gone to it. Yeah, let's send you a link da'wah training. I don't know if I can put it here. Alhamdulillah. What's, what's his name? Is uh Muhammad Filali? He is brilliant, mashallah. He's smiles ear to ear. He's very has magnetic person. He wants to work with us. Human Badri, Dr. Badri, you know, Madi is gonna work with us. Nick is gonna work with us. 
and hopefully you will work with us. Hopefully some of the sisters that are intelligent and astute and 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 and, and compassionate and driven would work. I, I want like high caliber. We don't want anybody who's lazy. You know, so we want, if you know somebody who's interested, who's done da'wah, because I haven't done da'wah before, but I think we will, we will, we will hone it in. We will get something that that's productive, that helpful. But if you know someone who's done da'wah, who's got experience, who we can benefit from, please give them my number. It's 973-650-4688 or just tell Madi Hashi. You can reach me anytime. Have them get in touch with me. Maybe to educate me and then maybe to get involved with them because we're really going to put something together that's nice, hopefully. I, I just sent that link for da'wah uh, training. I don't know when they're when they going to start, but I know registration is open and it's free. Alhamdulillah. Zakir Nayak, I, I heard he does that's da'wah too. He's amazing. So I'm going to also... I just haven't had time. I've been really running around like a chicken with no head, doing 20 million things at one time. I just, I wish there was more time. <laughs> I wish there was more time in the day, more than 24 hours in the day, but sadly, there's not. Okay, and uh, that's it. I'm going to stop recording, but we could, we could still uh, talk.